Hi guys, it's Kristen Hine with Healthy Home Fitness and Land Escapes. Um, I am coming to you from both of my pages today to do um, a little container planting workshop for you guys for the next four days. So thank you for joining in with me. I appreciate you being here and I hope that I can share something um, that will be helpful for you as you're getting ready to plant containers for summer and make it a little bit less daunting of a task. Now with my landscaping business, I do a ton of this. Um, um, so it's literally just like something I don't think that much about anymore because it's just part of my trade um, But I do understand that for some people it can be confusing and Intimidating and so I thought you know what it's something I love to do so I'm gonna bring some tips to you guys this week and um, Hopefully it's helpful. So what I want you to do first of all is each day check in on this event page and I'm gonna have a new video for you guys so today we're gonna to do just container basics things you need to know to get ready to plant a container garden um, tomorrow which is Wednesday we're gonna teach you a little bit about how to actually choose plants what to look for colors textures um, flowers different types of plants for Sun and shade and all that kind of stuff so that'll be coming up for you tomorrow and then Thursday and Friday, we're actually going to plant containers. So each day, Thursday and Friday, I'm going to give you three different container planting ideas. And I'm going to show you how I put them together, show you what plants are going in them. And hopefully that will all help you guys, you know, feel a little bit more at ease when you go to the garden center to pick out plants for your containers. So to get started today, we're not going to talk plants. We're just talking how to get ready to plant a container. So um, the very first thing you need to do is have a container, right? Um, so how do you choose the right container? First of all, you need to be aware of different materials. So containers can come in all sorts of different things. They could be plastic, they could be a resin or a, a poly of some sort. Um, they could be terracotta, they could be ceramic, they could be concrete. There's lots and lots of different materials that containers are gonna be made out of. So one thing that you really need to think about though when you choose a container and decide what material you want it to um, be made of is, is this something that you're going to leave outside year round? Um, and why that is important for those of you that have winter you have the freeze you know in the winter uh, it's really important because that freeze and thaw can actually crack your containers so if you plan to leave this outside year-round and you live, live in a climate where you do have a hard freeze during the winter um, you're gonna want to choose a material that's gonna withstand that so you don't just end up out your containers in a couple of years um, if you're in a warmer climate probably not gonna matter so much now, my personal favorite is, uh, for my business, I have a couple of different lines of containers that we carry, and they are all like a poly resin, so they're very, very durable. Actually, the two lines that I carry have a 10-year manufacturer warranty, which is awesome. Um, so that might be something to ask your garden center about when you're going to look at containers is, you know, what, what you're buying, does it have any sort of warranty or something like that? So most probably will not, and that's okay. Um, but if you want to invest a little bit more into the cost of your containers and get something that's going to last you for a lot longer, then look into that. Um, and if you want to know uh, brands or whatever I'm happy to, to make some recommendations for you based on where you might live so um, I love the poly resin this looks like a terracotta pot super lightweight though I could throw it across the parking lot and it won't break um, they're double wall so it's nice and thick and it's light now the next thing you know here's another one if you guys can see that this is a larger container it's about three foot tall and this is also a resin. It does not have a double wall though. It's a thinner container, but that's okay as well. It has the same warranty. And you know, other thing you might wanna consider is different shapes. So depending on where you're gonna be putting it, you might choose you know, something that's like a low flat bowl, like that might go on top of a table. So there's lots and lots of different kinds, lots of colors, lots of materials. So just find something you like and something that will fit in the location that you're gonna put it. So that brings me to my next thing, where are you gonna put it? <laughs> um, it could be on your front porch, it could be on your bat patio, on your deck, it might be a window box, something that's hanging outside of a window, um, or it could just be in your garden. There is no you know, rule to where you put containers, um, just wherever you need color. So I think they're great to work into the actual garden itself. Um, to give you that burst of color when maybe some of the perennial flowers and shrubs aren't in bloom during the summer. 
So choose your container. The next thing once you have your container chosen is make sure it has drainage holes. Unless you're doing a water garden where you want that water to stay in the container, you want to make sure that there's a hole so it drains. So check your container, make sure if you can see that. There we go. See the hole in the bottom there? Goes all the way through. So that's your next thing. Make sure you have drainage holes. And what you're going to want to do, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this tomorrow as well, is you're going to put like some rocks, some river rocks, some broken pots, maybe some broken terracotta pieces, just something in the base to cover that hole. Um, what that does is it allows the water to drain through without losing your soil or without having the soil get into that hole and clog the hole up. So something else to make sure you do before you put potting soil in is to cover the hole with something to give it a little bit of extra drainage and to prevent the potting soil from going through. So next, we're gonna choose potting soil. And I have some here, I'm not gonna drag this whole thing over here. Maybe I can turn my camera. You can see it. So I have some here that I just got out of one of our bags because I sell, I have this stuff in like these massive three cubic foot bags. Um, and I didn't really feel like holding that while I'm doing this video. So I just put some in here. But essentially, you want to look for just a nice good potting soil. See if you can see. See all the different granulars. There's some vermic vermiculite, perlite, in a nice light mix of soil. What you do not want to buy is garden soil. And you don't want to go dig dirt out of your backyard and put that in your pots. It's way too heavy. It's way too dense. The annuals that we're going to be planting aren't going to like that. So get a good bag of just regular potting mix, potting soil from the garden center. And after you have your little rocks or your broken terracotta pieces covering the hole, go ahead and fill the pot up. One thing to know is this light potting soil, it does compress. So oftentimes if you just dump it in and fill your pot up and then you go to plant, um, what you'll find is after you water a couple of times, that soil's gonna sink and settle and suddenly you'll have a lot less soil in the pot than you thought you did. So when you fill up your pot, make sure you really kind of get your fist in there and push it down and you know compress that soil a little bit. You're gonna want to fill your pot up. So you've got a couple inches of gap at the top and that's gonna allow you to have some space in there when you're watering so that you're not overflowing and the soil's not rushing out the sides of your pot. Other things you're gonna need to plant is a pair of gardening gloves and perhaps a knife. I love this tool. This is one of my favorite gardening tools. Um, literally, it's a steak knife from the dollar store. Um, you can get these at any dollar store and usually a pack of two or three. And they're great if you need to like slice the roots off the bottom or um, you know, cut something up or divide something. Heck, they're good for weeding in the garden. So maybe a knife, depending on the pot, the plants that you're gonna be using. Garden gloves, and if you wanna use a trowel, more power to you. I hate trowels when it comes to container planting. I just don't think there's a need for it. I like to be able to feel the dirt and feel the plants. Um, and we're not dealing with the hard garden soil, remember, because you've got your light potting mix. So you shouldn't need a trowel, but if that's your thing, you know, you can definitely use one. So I think that is about all, I'm checking my notes, um, that I wanted to go through with you guys today. So let me know if you have any questions on what to get started with. If you guys you know, have a pot that you wanna use, post a picture of it down in the comments below um, or ask your questions in the comments below this video and let me know what I can do to help you guys get started. So tomorrow we're gonna pick out plants and then the next two days we're gonna actually put them into the pots for you guys. So thanks again for being here and I hope this is gonna be a fun week for you and if you haven't already, share it with your friends. I'd love to get as many people in here as we can and um, just make it a fun week. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.